Next up, Portlandia, out. Supersized cargo, skip. The smaller ports, what's going on there? Well, you take a look at the exchange value to customers. You have the idea of what your alternative is, you add up the benefits, you subtract off whatever you're missing, and you come up with the exchange value. As long as you price below your exchange value, like stay there, people buy. That's the idea. Well, let's apply that concept to Portland, to the ports in Portland. You look, take a look at their alternative ports. You got Vancouver, you got Seattle, you got some alternative ports out there on the West Coast. That kind of sets the price. The price is kind of set for uh, for unloading and loading a, a ship. But Portlandia suffers from many different orientations of negative value proposition. They got a shallow interest. The shallow, the shallow interest means they can only handle 6,500 20 equivalent foot, 20 foot equivalent unit ships. Now you look at the big super ships right now, they're holding 18,000 TEUs. Sometimes they're going up to 22,000 20 foot equivalent unit ships for container ships. So the shallow interest immediately compresses the market that would want to use Portland compresses it so much that maybe nobody wants to use it. It has an inland location. It takes 100 miles to travel up to the Columbia River. That adds hours on the trip. And let's face it, time is money in shipping. Then we always have the perennial problem of uh, labor strikes and lack of reliability that raises fear, uncertainty, and doubt, known as the FUD factor, that decreases the willingness to pay by shipping companies. So you look at Portlandia, their pricing way up here, their value is way down there, and who, what happens? Portlandia, out. When you lose your value proposition, you're basically going to lose your market. So you've got to keep fighting to drive that value proposition. Every time you make it go a little better, make sure you capture that with your price. That's what Wiglaf Toltec Mesoamerican dude 